In the latest ABC News Washington Post poll, President Trump has a narrow lead over Joe Biden in a neck and neck race at 49 percent compared to 48 percent in the state of Arizona. According to the Real Clear Politics average overall, Joe Biden has about a 4.1 advantage in Arizona. So the poll also found a tight race for the Senate seat in Arizona with Democrat Mark Kelly at 49 percent, incumbent Martha McSally at 48 percent among likely voters, one of the better polls for her. Here to discuss the state of the respective races, associate editor of politics or Reporter at the Arizona Mayor, Jeremy Duda. Jeremy, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. Of course. So, look, we've been doing these series on a range of battleground states. What do we in Washington not understand about what's happening on the ground in Arizona, the shifting dynamics since 2016, and maybe just react to this news, which shows that President Trump, at least in the next 13 days or so, probably not going to be visiting the state, which is a must win for him in November. Sure, that's going to shake some things up. Uh, President Trump, uh, he's been out here a few times lately, uh, a lot for a state that's normally not in play. Uh, and he was planning on being back out here uh, early next week on uh, Monday and Tuesday in Flagstaff and Tucson. I would imagine uh, those trips are off now. In the meantime, uh, uh, Vice President Biden will be out here next, and, and Kamala Harris will be out here next Thursday. I believe their first trips out here. They've done a few virtual events in Arizona, but haven't come out here in person yet. So they're pretty clearly making a big play for the state there. You can't turn on TV without seeing a ton of Biden ads, uh, which, uh, again, unusual. We, we usually get the kind of passed over here in Arizona. In 2016, we got some attention. Uh, Hillary Clinton made a play for the state. Obviously, it wasn't enough for her, but uh, things are, uh, Biden looks like he's in better shape than she was four years ago, for certain. Yeah, and why do you think that that is? I mean, one of the things that we've tracked here is seniors have moved towards Joe Biden versus how Hillary Clinton performed with them last time around. Obviously, you have a number of older voters in the state. Take us through what some of the improvements for Joe Biden have been this time around that could put the state in play for Democrats. Well, obviously, there's the same factors that are kind of making, uh, you know, putting uh, new states in play for Biden and the Democrats all over the country. Uh, Trump's unpopularity, I think, kind of a lot of people are just kind of worn out with everything. But here in Arizona, we definitely have seen uh, some shifting uh, demographics, shifting trends. Um, this has been, you know, solidly Republican territory for a long time. Uh, last time we went for a, a Democratic presidential candidate was 96 with uh, Bill Clinton. Last mm. time before that was 1948 mm. with Harry Truman. But uh, mm. starting in 2016, we've really seen some changes. We had, uh, especially here in Maricopa County, which is about 4 million people, home to the Phoenix metro area. It's uh, you know, about 60% of the state. So it's got a make or, make or break here. In 2016, you saw you know, Hillary Clinton you know, lose, but you know, only by a few points, but I think about four points, which is much better than most Democrats perform here. In Maricopa County, you saw a couple of Democrats win uh, countywide seats. Uh, two years later, 2018, you saw Democrats win some statewide seats and, and while winning Maricopa County as well. Uh, Senator Kirsten Sinema, you know, most notably among them, plus a few statewide offices like Secretary of State and the uh, state school superintendent. Um, Demo the races for the legislature are getting closer. The margins are narrower uh, than they've been uh, since the 1960s for the Democrats. There definitely seen some changes. And it's hard to say whether that's a, re a result of Trump or is it really as a result of real long-term changes that it'll probably take a few more election cycles to really get a handle on that. But at least for now, you know, things are much more in play for Democrats than they normally would be. Certainly. So, Jeremy, tell us about that Senate race, too. I mean, for a long time, people have basically written off Martha McSally. Now things maybe are tightening for her. What's happening within that Senate seat? What are the, the dynamics at play? I remember last time around, Martha McSally privately said that that vote on uh, the vote on Obamacare is what killed her in the race against cinema. What are the issues at play right now, which are giving a boost to Mark Kelly's campaign? Uh, health care, health care, health care. I mean, it's the yeah. same thing that we saw with cinema two years ago. Mark Kelly is, Mark Kelly is hammering that vote uh, from 2017 on uh, you know, repeal and replace of Obamacare. It is still kind of the, the millstone around McSally's neck. You even saw yesterday we had uh, there was that vote in the Senate that Chuck Schumer managed to force on uh, cutting off uh, or blocking the Department of Justice from uh, helping out with that lawsuit uh, to overturn Obamacare. You, know, you saw, I think, you know, five or six vulnerable Republicans break ranks and vote with the Democrats on that. McSally was among them. So you can really ah. see how much that's that's hurting her. Um, and that's that's really been, you know, from start to finish, the core of uh, McSally, or of uh, Mark Kelly's messaging, the same mm -hmm. as it was for Cinema two years ago. So, uh, you know, for, for McSally, it's a lot of stuff with uh, Mark Kelly's ties to China and um, have a lot of the same messaging you're hearing from Republicans uh, nationwide. And the race is, does look like it might be starting to tighten up a little bit. I mean, you're seeing McSally uh, kind of running. 
I think uh, last week or the week before she ran a pretty a really solid uh, you know bio ad. I think a lot of my the Republicans I talked to have been waiting to see messaging like 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 that from her for two and a half years. So maybe things are starting to tighten up a little bit. It's pretty wild, though, if she does lose to Mark Kelly, she will be single handedly responsible for handing to Democrats yeah, two, two seats, seats. in the same, <laughs> both Senate seats Amazing. in the state of Arizona. Um, last question for you, Jeremy, like what do you see as the central issues? What is the Biden campaign? What are the Trump campaign's messaging? Uh, what is it directly in that state? Uh, I think you know, health care, again, is um, you know, playing a major role in that. And um I think just kind of a return to normalcy, I think, is what um, a lot of folks who were on the Biden campaign and a lot of the Democrats are really pushing here. Yeah, makes yeah, sense. Makes sense. I think we all kind of find that rather appealing. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, thank, thank you, you Jeremy. very much. Appreciate Good it. to have you. Thanks right, for having me. Mm -hmm. Still to come, a new piece details a way in which Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett seems to have a soft spot for corporate power. So editor-at-large Jackman David Sirota, he's dug into a little bit of her past. That's when Rising continues.